Well, now I've got the GTX 560 Ti tuned into its overclock. This is the Cyclone 2 model. I am not using the reference cooler for my overclocking testing, and I am not quite able to break a 15,000 3D Mark score in Vantage by like 63 points, which is really a shame, but uh, there you have it. The final clocks that I ended up with are 1.078 gigahertz, yeah. which if, if I could get it to focus, you would be able to see. Come on, darken a little bit or brighten a little bit. Whatever, okay. There, look at that and then look at that quick. Can you see it? Whatever. Okay, and then on the memory, I was able to get around 2.2 gigahertz. Not, uh, not too, too much of an overclock on the memory itself. So thank you for checking out this little overclocking adventure on the GTX 550 Ti. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Well, I don't have a version of Afterburner yet that supports overvolting on the GTX 550, but 2.1.0 does support at least changing the clock speeds. So here's my default clocks on the MSI Cyclone 2 version of the GTX 550. And uh, you can see here that uh, I have already run my stock clock benchmark. So I was able to achieve 13, just over 13,000 3D Mark scores in the performance mode of 3D Mark Vantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune this card into whatever clock I can, or whatever clocks I can get out of it, and see what kind of a performance improvement we can get by overclocking this particular video card. I'm not going to be having a look at the reference card, but something to remember is that the reference card starts 50 megahertz lower than this particular overclocked card. So it may have more overclocking headroom based on that it starts lower in terms of sheer how many megahertz you can turn it up, but it probably won't be able to get as high with the cooler that's not as good as well as with the absence of the heatsink on the VRM.